we are going to be learning acrylic paint techniques today. So what you need are, you need a larger brush with a long handle, you need a shorter brush that has um, not very many bristles, the little hairs, the larger handle brush to have several hairs such as that, you see the difference in the brushes. You need three or four pieces of paper towel, you need your uh, paint, paint tray, your palette with either black, white, and red, or you could do black, white, and blue. You need a water container full of water, piece of paper, and here we go. So what you need first um, is we want to go ahead and do um, a tapping technique, then we're going to do a dragging technique, and then we're going to learn about dry brush paint, the dry brush technique. And there's no certain shape you have to do. I tend to do just more rectangle shapes. But what we're going to end up creating with these two is a tint side where the light is shining down. And that creates, on the opposite side, a shade side or a shadow side. So we're going to go from something that's really flat, two-dimensional looking paint to where it looks a little more uh, three-dimensional with the light source. We're going to do what's called an implied light source. We don't actually see the light or the sun or whatever's causing the light we can tell what direction that it comes down. So this is the after and this is how we start out, just plain piece of paper. So on your brush you have the wood handle, the metal ferrule, and the little hairs, the bristles. So it's always good to hang on to the metal ferrule, control the brush a lot better this way. So we're using just the acrylic paint and I would just do some kind of just simple shape. I tend to do rectangle shapes but if you want to go ahead and draw a shape on here and actually work on just a certain kind of shape you can do that like if you wanted to do, go ahead and draw a square or uh, a circle something like that any kind of shape would work and when you paint you want the paint to be very thick paint stays wet longer you want it to be opaque that means you cannot see through it um, if you get it really watery or spread it out too thin it becomes transparent and the techniques these first two techniques that I'm showing you really only work while the paint is wet. So I have a really thick opaque red paint, so I'm going to take the brush, clean it out in the water container really well. Very important to get all the paint out, get all the water out, and just to show you how much water a brush holds, okay, if I go just from the water container to my next color of paint, I'm going to be adding all of this water to the paint. And I'm going to get very watery, very transparent paint that's not going to work very well at all. So you want to get all the water out of the brush. These larger brushes hold a lot of water. So you got to get all that water out of the brush. So I'm going to have just the implied light coming from the top. If you want to come from an angle or come from the side, any, any direction would work. I'm just going to have it come from the top. So with a large brush, I'm going to put some white on the end of the brush. And I'm going to just apply it along the top edge like that. So that's where the light is going to come from. Clean the brush out. Okay, go ahead and dry it off. Paint takes some time. It's very time consuming because every time you get a different color and you want to go to uh, another color, from one color to, to the next, you got to wash your brush off. You got to dry it. I'm going to clean that off. When I add the black, you could also use brown or maybe a dark gray. I'm just going to use black. You want to use a small brush with not very many bristles on the end. It's very tough or, you know, it's, it's a lot more difficult to use too much white. Black, it's very easy, very simple to use too much black. You can see how much black I put compared to the white. So a lot of white, a little bit of black. Black's a very dark, dominant color. It just overpowers everything. Or if you don't use enough white, then the white doesn't really show up and it's uh, not very dominant color at all. All right, so what I did is I basically just layered the color. So I have the, the red paint, I layered on the white and the black, so basically I just overlapped them like this. They're basically just overlapped. Now I wanna go where they're gonna blend and mix in like this. So I'm gonna go from this overlap to this, where they are going to blend and mix together. So with a clean, dry brush, hanging onto the metal part of the brush so I can control it better, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna tap in the white just back and forth, like that. It's going to make a, make a tint of red, T-I-N-T, not T-E-N-T. -E so I made a tint of red, okay? So it's a pink color, and what you do is once you get that, it's still not blended really well because it's still a line. 
Now with your brush, you take this and you're going back and forth and you start going towards the middle. And so it just kind of all blends and all kind of fades together like that. So it's going from lighter to darker like that. So now I've got one side done. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean off the brush. Let me dry it off. Get all the water out of the brush. I'm gonna go ahead and use the same large brush. You don't wanna turn the brush a weird direction, okay, or your hand, and it's not gonna work as well, so it's better to turn the paper. So with a clean, dry brush, I'm gonna go ahead and tap in the black, back and forth a few times and make a dark red, like a maroon color. Okay, and then once I get that, it's still overlapped. It's still basically a line. It's just a longer line. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to go towards the middle. So it just kind of all mixes and kind of just fades together like that. So they're both blending towards the middle now. They're not just the colors by themselves. So once again, I took it, I went just back and forth, and then I just kind of went towards the middle like that. Okay, so now they are all blended. It looks more like a more, more three-dimensional type of shape. Right now, now it looks almost like a, you know, like a, basically a three-dimensional rectangle shape instead of just, just a flat shape. It looks more like a form now, like that. So that is the tap technique. So now we're going to go to the dragging technique. This is more of a kind of a rough texture, really great for fur, grass, um, something that's got a lot of texture to it on the appearance of how it looks or how it would actually touch if it was there. Tree bark, gravel, lots of things that kind of have that more of a, a rough texture that's not smooth. All right, so it starts off the same way. Just go ahead and use the same color. In this case, I'm using red. You could also use blue. So again, really thick, opaque paint. And you could have a pre-drawn shape here if you'd like to. I'm just going to go ahead and paint just another rectangular type shape, but any kind of shape will work. As long as it's not way too elaborate, where it takes so long to paint in the shape, your paint starts to dry. Uh, acrylic paint does dry fairly fast, so you want to make sure you just apply it really thick, and then you give yourself a chance for it to stay wet even longer, versus having it really spread out thin and being transparent. It's a very thick, opaque paint like that. And again, I'm hanging on to the metal part of the brush. If you hang on to the wood handle, you get really shaky like this, and you can't control the brush really well. So you want to hang on to some part of the metal of the brush, the metal ferrule. I'm going to clean the brush off. Okay, dry it really well. A lot of water in these large brushes. And then this starts off the same way. I'm going to do the same applied light. So I'm going to use the larger brush again to add white at the top. Just going to keep the the light coming down from the top. So I'm gonna put a lot of white, like on the, just on the top edge where the light is coming down from. So a large brush to add white. Clean that off, dry it. All right, then I'm gonna use the small brush. I've cleaned it off already. I'm just gonna go ahead and dry the small brush out. And I'm going to add the black a little bit with a small brush. Again, it's a very dark, dominant color, very overpowering color, so I'm going to add the black just on the bottom part. So a lot of white, a little bit of black. You can kind of see the difference is what I added. So again, I just basically kind of overlapped and layered the colors. So now I'm going to go ahead and blend them. So a different technique this time. So you need a dry paper towel, large uh, dry brush, Okay, and what you're going to do this time is you're going to go from the edge, you're going to drag it to the middle, and you're going to wipe off your brush on the paper towel. So you're going to go from the edge, drag it to the middle, wipe off your brush on a paper towel. Why I'm wiping it off each time is so I'm not re-adding all that red paint up there, because then it would end up looking the same. So you got to make sure you dry off your brush, because if yours looks all the same, then you forgot to wipe off your brush. Or you're just kind of going back and forth, and then you'd wipe off your brush, then go back and forth some more, and then wipe off your brush. But it works much better if every time you drag the brush down, you wipe it off. And you're taking off all that extra red paint that you are dragging down. And you can see how that fades in like that. So then you can see how the technique is different. This is a much smoother technique. This is more of a rough technique.
Okay, then I'm just gonna go ahead and get all the paint out of the brush. I'm not gonna get it wet. Get all the paint out of the brush. I'm gonna do the same with the black. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the edge, drag it to the middle, wipe off the brush. Go to the edge, drag it to the middle, wipe off the brush. You just kind of go along and you go ahead and just do that like that. Okay, and then you can see how the black is kind of fades in and how it blends together like that. So same way as the top but the bottom. So now we have that technique finished, the dragging technique. All right, one more, one more technique works really well. This is going to be a dry brush technique. This is really well, not really necessarily by itself. This is really good to add on top of another color that's dry. So like if you have a brown tree trunk and you want to add more of a texture to it, you could do some dry brush painting. I'll show you a couple different ways to dry brush on here as well. Okay, but usually it's not used by itself. You could also use it for doing extra shadowing or shading as well. So for dry brush, I'm just gonna use the large brush. You need a clean dry brush. I'm just going to use some black. You could just use, also use like a, a brown or a dark gray works really well. So I've got a little bit of paint on the brush. What I'm going to do is get almost all that paint off the brush on a paper towel. So I have hardly any paint on the brush. Okay. So I've got almost all the paint off. Then what I'm going to do is come back over here and I'm going to just tap some on here like this. It should look really dry and scratchy. You can either tap it on like the tap technique here, okay? Or you can just kind of swipe back and forth, such as that, okay? You can swipe back and forth. It should look really dry, scratchy looking lines. This should be really dry, scratchy looking little, uh, kind of a little stippled type of texture like that. So back and forth and tapping. If you end up getting like big dots, big polka dots, okay, you've got too much paint or too much water. If you end up getting large streaks or lines, again, you've got too much paint or too much water. So it's very, very important you get almost all the paint off the brush before you go back to your artwork that you are creating, whether it's your painting or you're doing your practice techniques such as this. All right, so those are the three techniques. Just to show the example we started with and then the one we just ended up with. All right, so once you finish that, you write your name on it, uh, you put your class period on there as well. This goes over in the drying rack, which I will put over there in just a little bit. Uh, brushes, you just go ahead and clean them in the water really well. Please make sure all the paint's out. If you don't get the paint all out, the little bristles turn to plastic and they are no longer usable. So make sure all the paint's out. You don't have to dry them completely, but if you do Kind of run them across a paper towel you can make sure that the paint is gone and then they go back in the brushes container water this will begin to go uh, dumped out in the sink for the sink for your row you just go ahead and dump this out and then you put it back where it belongs over on the table with the rest of the water containers paint tray this is a different story this is what you have to do with the paint tray is you get a warm warm damp sponge and you go through and you clean out all the paint again using the sink for your row please dry it off and then this goes back in the cabinet with the other paint trays the other palettes so and then your extra leftover paper towels you use to get any water or paint off the table so cleanup is uh, very important as well as getting the supplies out and then of course working on your work so that is how you create the different paint techniques that we're going to be using in class